what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about the best legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms to invest in and the best order that you should do so now there's one thing i want to talk about really quick there will be a timestamp in the description below to skip this intro portion but if you guys missed it i did live stream call of duty black ops cold war right here on youtube it was my first youtube stream in over a year i had a ton of fun and i'm very excited for this new call of duty game and if you guys didn't know before rise of kingdoms and before 2020 this was primarily a call of duty youtube channel and the reason i switched to rock is because i didn't like modern warfare last year and i was playing rock way more than anything else and people seemed to like my videos so i kept it going i'm going to be covering a lot of call of duty black ops cold war assuming it's good when it does come out there is a beta on october 8th that i want to play so guys you can expect some call of duty gameplay and guides from me and i hope that you guys will give them a chance right if you guys like my rise of kingdoms videos my tips tricks guides things like that i'm going to be doing the same stuff for call of duty so best guns attachments perks class setups things like that so if you guys play call of duty hopefully you guys will give those videos of mine a chance it would mean the world to me that you guys would stick around despite me playing a different game than the one that you came to my channel for with that out of the way we have seen three rise of kingdoms content creators in the last week create a video talking about the best legendary commanders now we first saw chisco post a video talking about the best or basically his tier list for legendaries in season five of kvk then we saw dragothian post his video about the best order with which you should invest in legendary commanders and finally we saw 12 inch pv penis release his video talking about the best legendary commander order you should invest in if you're a free to play player now i want to give a huge shout out to 12 inch for his uh content in general uh he's a super chill guy really good free to play videos on his channel he is the most qualified content creator for rise of kingdoms to give free to play advice and he knows the game very very well from a free to play perspective there's a link in the description you have to go sub to him you have to pause the video go sub to his channel come back and finish it okay now the reason i'm giving him such a big shout out is because his video actually lines up very closely to what i'm going to talk about in the first portion of this video which means i think he gives some of the best advice in in rise of kingdoms for most players now of course this video we're going to be talking about the order with which you should invest in legendary commanders now when i made this video when i when i made the list right i have a list here on the side of the screen uh, that i want to talk about and when i made this i made it with the uh with the um idea that most of you watching are free to play or very low spender right if you're spending less than like 150 dollars a month in this game i would say that's a low spender right um or, or le <laughs> a lot of you have probably spent less than 100 dollars period in this game okay so that's what i consider a low spender and i would say that's probably 90 percent of you guys or more right probably more than that with that knowledge in mind it really narrows down which commanders you should be focusing on right because if you look at uh chiskel's tier list right obviously Attila Takeda it's it's an obvious choice for rallies but most free-to-play players aren't gonna have Attila Takeda and honestly they shouldn't because free-to-play players shouldn't be rallying right it's just it they shouldn't be you want the rally leader to have insanely good equipment they want to be tier five they want to have amazing city skins right these are all important for uh for rallying the same thing with leading garrison you can look at like Theodora and YSS like they're great commanders but should you invest in them as a free to play I don't think so now I think Dragothian's video is very good as well very informative and honestly I think Dragothian is very underrated as a content creator because he knows this game probably better than almost anybody like he is very very knowledgeable on rise of kingdoms a lot of respect for Dragothian okay a lot of respect for him he's an insanely good player but i think some of his advice in his video it assumes that you're spending a bit of money in the game right which is you know those are the types of players that he plays with which makes a lot of sense i think that for most of you guys that's not going to be the case okay so with all that out of the way let's jump into this guide now charles martel is on the screen for a reason we're not going to be talking about gold key commanders or uh any epics or ethel fled in this video the reason is because you should not be investing any sculptures in any of those commanders obviously ethel fled you can't uh because it's just it's not a good investment you're going to get them for free over time anyway 
and this video is a long term investment guide. Okay. However, it is important to know that anytime there's an event that comes around that gives you free gold keys, you should take advantage of it because Martel is the best gold key commander that you can get. And so the more gold keys you get, the more chances you have at getting Martel. And that's a really good legendary commander. He's actually like meta status, even late game. So definitely get Martel very good. You want to get him to five, five, one, one, at least before you start using him. Uh, he's basically good to go at that point, but his fourth skill is very good. His expertise is pretty good as well. So keep that in mind. The next best thing is obviously Tao Tao and then El Cid. Those two maybe are interchangeable, but I really do think uh, Tao Tao is the second best gold key commander. Regardless, keep that in mind, okay? With that being said, let's talk about the guide. Your first legendary commander investment is going to be Richard the First. And when I say investment, I just mean summon him, okay? Richard the First, and I'm assuming this guide is for people who are brand new, which means you're in a new kingdom, new server you just started playing the game uh you want to summon richard the first on the wheel of fortune he first shows up in your kingdom around day 38 uh and you'll see his wheel of fortune show up you should at least summon him and that's the bare minimum or maybe just do 10 spins of each wheel just in case right if you have the free gems but really you want to save your gems for god dang it man i ain't no freaking robot okay i'm not a robot Just get out of here you should mainly be saving your gems for the e song Ye wheel okay the e song Ye wheel is going to be some of the best value that you get for your gems when it comes to legendary commander sculptures the reason for this is because on average the legendary commander sculpture wheels that have a specific commander will give you about 600 gems or 700 gems per legendary head which is insanely good value again that's an average uh esong comes around the 94 day mark for your kingdom esong ye is the first commander that i recommend you expertise in the legendary tier the reason for this i have a whole video on esong ye but the reason for this is because of his circular aoe he has crazy good skill damage he also has rage regeneration Esong is good for chaining barbarians for free rewards. He's good for open field AOE damage. He's good for being a garrison for things like, uh, what is it? Shadow Legion, I think, is uh, is the event where you get attacked. Esong does so many good things. He's an incredible investment. So definitely save your gems uh, and expertise Esong A first. Okay, that's a huge investment. That's probably going to take you anywhere from probably around 225 days give or take right if you're super active in the game so keep that in mind okay after you expertise isong the next wheel is going to be khan and i would say if you want summon khan but i don't think he's a good investment for a free to play or a low spender um he's really only going to be used for season two of kvk for rallies and you're not going to be leading rallies and he's good for like the soroli events so there's that but i wouldn't recommend investing in khan during the time that Khan is on the wheel, so again, he comes around three times and then there's a universal wheel. Um, during the time that Khan is on the wheel, you want to be investing your universals into Richard. So first you summon Richard, expertise Esong, then you go back to Richard and get him to 5511. That's my recommendation. At 5511, Richard is most of the way there. Um, what this does is this gives you a good primary commander for Isong Ye, so you can use him in the open field against enemies, and he'll pretty much be left alone at that point. He's also pretty tanky. He's good for a lot of things, right? Richard is just a great commander. He's good for the ruins in season four, five, uh, three, four, and five of KVK and beyond, I believe. Overall, for 190 sculptures, that's a solid investment. Once you get Richard to 5511 around that time, or maybe even during that time, depending on how fast you get sculptures uh alexander the great is going to show up on the wheel this is the second commander that i recommend that you expertise after esong ye okay alexander isn't as good as esong but he is he's second in this list for a reason he's very very good very versatile in the open field very good for sunset canyon overall very good investment and because of that you should be spinning his wheel at least 10 times every time it comes around but the more you can spin the wheel in a single event, the better you want to hit those milestones. So instead of doing like, you know, 30 spins for each one, I would say just bring one of them to a hundred, right? It's just a better use of your gems uh, and maybe save all your gems for the last Alexander wheel. So you can see how far you can go with it. That's just uh, an idea. But regardless, Alexander is the second legendary that I recommend that you expertise. Now, 
once that happens the next commander on the wheel is edward i i don't recommend uh get doing anything with edward he's a good rally leader for season two of kvk you're not gonna be doing that okay now keep in mind if you're a low spender every time you summon a legendary you will see a five dollar bundle show up that gives you 10 legendary commander sculptures universal that is like one of the best bundles that you can buy as a low spender now after alexander you are going to want to invest in constantine okay constantine i would bring him to five five one one you can see that's what i have him as here the reason that constantine is the next commander that you want to invest in is because he is a game changer for your sunset canyon he makes your sunset team exponentially better once you have uh expertise ethel fled expertise uh isong yay and at this point you'll have um alexander and richard at usable or expertise levels constantine will be a game changer for your sunset team he's very powerful at buffing there's a lot to love about constantine and a majority of his usefulness is at 5511 if you're a big spender you can expertise him and at that point you'll have a garrison leader for flags now at this point you have a lot of value as a player and we're going to talk about the armies that you can make in the open field in just a second but getting constantine to 5511 means that up until this point you will have spent 1760 legendary commander sculptures if you only got richard to 5511 and constantine to 5511 huge investment but i think that's the best thing that you could do it's also worth noting that, that by the time you get constantine to 5511 your Charles Martel that you've been getting from gold keys absolutely for free is probably around the realm of five, 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 something. Uh, if you're incredibly, incredibly lucky, maybe he's expertise, but yeah, your Martel is going to be very good, very usable in the open field. So while we've only talked about four legendary investments, you'll also have Charles Martel and you'll also have ethel flood as well she's another really great commander so that's six legendaries up until this point that are going to be very usable for you as a free-to-play player now just to give you an example of some armies that you can build with these combinations you could do richard with he song a alex with sun Tzu, and constantine with martel right those are amazing combinations that you can do in the open field you can swap them around you could also throw Joan of Arc in there and take out Sun Tzu if you want to be more supportive you have options and you have very good commanders for the open field and it also saves all of your cavalry units to be reinforcing Attila Takeda armies which is what you should be doing as a free-to-play player Attila Takeda rallies are the meta for season three through probably six if I'm guessing right and you're going to be very versatile and very powerful as a free to play or low spender now after you get Constantine to 5511 you have some choices to make all right my throat is getting dry it's time to crack open a cold one with the boys things are getting serious now now the first path you could take would be to continue down the infantry path with expertise Guan Yu now this is a reasonable uh, thing that you could do because you've already invested in so many infantry commanders that adding another one will give you a lot more possibilities and Guan Yu is a great commander when he's expertise now it is 690 legendary commander sculptures but keep in mind you're going to be skipping the Edward wheel and the Takedo wheel and then Guan Yu shows up on day 374 so you can literally hoard gems for the, that entire time and then dump all them into a Guan Yu wheel and hopefully you'll get a ton of sculptures from doing that Guan Yu at expertise is going to be great for open field fighting because he does crazy good skill damage and AoE he also does some silencing which is really really powerful you also will uh increase the effectiveness of your Sunset Canyon team even further by having this crazy good AoE so Guan Yu would be a great next step if you want to continue down the path of infantry if you do that there are some really good army builds that you could do for example and again just an example but you could do Alex with Guan Yu, Richard with Yi Song Ye, Martel with Sun Tzu, and Constantine with Joan of Arc. And then you have four great armies you can have out in the open field. If you want to start focusing on other troop types besides infantry, so you can start getting more value out of those units, then you could focus on Ramses. Now, what this is going to do if you expertise Ramses is you're going to have a very powerful Archer March 
in the open field with Ramsey's primary, Isong A secondary. Now, Ramsey's Isong is actually also a rally combo that you could do if you're going up against a full infantry garrison. Like this would be really good against like a, a Constantine Martel full infantry. Now, again, I don't recommend rallying as a free to play or low spender, but it's something that you could do. You do now have that option if you go this route. If you do go this route, or even if you just want to use them as in the open field with Esong, you will have a Ramsey's Esong A, Richard Joan of Arc, Alex with Sun Tzu, and Martel with Constantine. That's just an example of four really good armies that you could have out in the open field for events like KVK, right? You want to be useful in KVK. Those are some really good armies that you can have. I think Ramses is also going to be pretty deadly if he gets swarmed with Isong A as a free to play player. I mean, he has this anti swarm built in when he's attacked that you have a 10% chance to gain 20 attack, 20% 20 attack, 20% March speed. And that goes all the way up to 40 and 40. So Ramses would be a decent investment to pair with a commander that you've already invested in previously, which is Isong. And finally, if you want to go the cavalry route, I think the, this is a really interesting one. And I think this might be what I decide to do with my account because I am at that point where I have Constantine 5511. But if you want to flesh out your cavalry, you could then start focusing on a 5551 Saladin with a 5551 William the First. That would be a crazy good cavalry combination. Now, getting both commanders to 5551 will cost you 760 legendary commander sculptures, which is 70 sculptures more than it takes for a single expertise so if you decide to expertise guan yu or you decide to expertise ramses that's going to be 690 sculptures going this route is going to cost you a little bit more but i think it's actually going to be more beneficial for you and your alliance in an event like kvk or even in Ark of Osiris. The reason for that is because William's fourth skill is insanely good. And by having him at 5551, he's going to be incredibly powerful. Now, a Saladin William combo, Saladin's going to give you a lot of tankiness for your, for your cavalry march. And William is going to give you some AOE. He's going to do some march speed reduction. He's going to give you even more attack, which honestly that is what saladin is kind of lacking right saladin is a bit more tanky so adding attack on there is just super super good now he does have some attack which is great but again the supportive nature of william is going to be insanely valuable for your alliance and your kingdom out in the open field and so if you have the option of investing in both of these i would say focus on william the first first get him to 5551 then i would focus on saladin after that however saladin does show up in the game way earlier than william so if you've already got your richard esong alex and constantine to the appropriate levels and william isn't around yet then you can start putting some sculptures into saladin to get him to 5551 and then by the time william comes around you can start investing in him as well william shows up much later in the game uh, i don't know exactly the time frame i don't remember apparently he's usable at the same time as guan yu which i don't understand that right or even attila takeda it says 310 days and then for William, it says 310 days. That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever, but yeah. I also think that a Saladin William will be a really good uh, bump in power for your um, Sunset Canyon team, right? So if you were using a uh, cavalry march in your Sunset Canyon team, then I think this is going to replace that march with something much more tanky and much more powerful and also supportive. Now, of course, if you're a huge spender in this game, then this list probably changes a lot. Uh, you'll have the ability to invest in most legendary commanders, at least to a certain extent. So keep that in mind. This video is primarily for low spenders because most of you guys are if you've been saving sculptures and you're not sure what to do with them but you're a low spender i think these are some of the best options that you could pick to invest in in rise of kingdoms and with that said if you guys enjoyed this video if you found it useful or informative or entertaining make sure you smack a thumbs up on it i really really do appreciate it and it does help out the channel a ton a lot of you guys are not subscribed to the channel so if you are new around here make sure you click that sub and click the bell button to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video as always comment down below telling me what you think about these recommendations do you think that this is a solid path that you could take 
do you think that you should focus on other things in the game other commanders let me know in the comment section below i would be eager to hear there will also be links in the description below to go ahead and sub to 12 inch pvp but also follow me on social media links will be down there for my instagram my twitter my discord and my twitch channel where i do live stream rise of kingdoms so if you haven't followed me over on those places go ahead and do that as well there's also a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks and it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms like i said absolutely for free you get fewer crashes than if you're playing on an older phone so it doesn't hurt to try it out link will be in the description down below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni we'll talk to you guys again soon peace